Well, in the late 19th century, there was an Aust um, Austrian pathologist who um, started looking at some of the anomalies that occur in the back part of the brain and thought that maybe there were some similarities in them and first described what he called Chiari 1, 2, and 3 malformations. Um, in children, and particularly in the headache world, um, so nowadays there are four types of Chiari malformations, but within the headache world we talk mostly about a Chiari 1 malformation. That's the most common type of um, Chiari. Type 2 is the, the type of Chiari more likely to present in children and adolescents. Um, and then there is increasing severity, you know, with one, two, three, and four being the most severe. So Chiari 1 malformation, the definition is when the back part of the brain, or the cerebellar tonsils, are lying too low in the foramen magnum, which is the hole in the back of the skull, where, the, where you go from the brain down into the spinal cord. And so sometimes when the cerebellar tonsils are lying too low, that can lead to overcrowding. It can affect the flow of cerebral spinal fluid or you know, cause other symptoms because of pressure being put onto the brainstem. So um, sometimes Chiari malformations or the degree to which the tonsils are, ly are lowly lying um, can improve with time. Oftentimes it stays the same. And again, if there's no associated symptoms, intervention is not needed. Um, but yes, sometimes people can improve over time. What's beginning to be investigated is whether or not Chiari is or can be part of a bigger uh, disorder or group of syndromes or a genetic syndrome where there are other things that we should be looking out for that might go along with Chiari. Where I work in Utah, we have a really great relationship with our neurosurgeons and do our best to avoid uh, having patients undergo surgery when it's not indicated. Um, so we work really closely together to ensure the type of, um, ensure the diagnosis of their headache type. Um, and this really stemmed from many patients who were undergoing decompression for Chiari, continuing to have headaches afterward. Perhaps the other symptoms would improve. Again, those associated symptoms of swallowing um, or coughing issues, but really the headaches kind of continuing. And so we always want to look at the bigger picture. Are there other contributing factors that could be contributing to the headache, and can we do something about those before we opt for surgery? Sometimes children will have had imaging performed because of scoliosis and find that there are abnormalities within their spine or these cavities or cysts that prompt one to go look up higher in the brain to see that there is um, obstruction of the flow, which can be caused by the low-lying tonsils. This is thought to be a really heterogeneous disorder, so one that we're still con continuing to understand, but it by itself um, typically does not explain one's headaches and is not a reason to rush right to surgery.